Hi, this is Nancy Miller from My Creative Life, and today I'm excited to have Lindsay Giroux, who is an art teacher and artist, here with me on my podcast. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Nancy. So hey. nice to be with you today. Yeah, thank you so much for um, being on my podcast. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. I'm really excited to get to talk about art today. Great. Well, um, can you tell the audience a little bit more about yourself? Sure. Uh, I am a painter and a sculptor. I have been teaching art for about 13 years now, mainly elementary school, and I will be moving up to uh, middle and high school this fall. I'm super excited about that. Oh, that's awesome, Lindsay. Yeah, that you got a lot going on. Um, can you maybe talk a little bit more about your um, sculpture, the work that you've been doing personally with the audience? Absolutely. Uh, I dabble in a lot of different mediums. Um, mainly lately I've been painting in gouache mm. and uh, pen and ink drawings, uh, a lot of observational drawings and things inspired by the seasons and mainly my garden and how things, how things grow and evolve through the seasons um, and how those af affect my spirituality. So that's mm. been really, that's been a really interesting um I just got really nervous. All oh of a no, sudden. it's okay. It's, <laughs> it's okay. It's just having I a conversation. I've never loud before. Okay. okay. But um, yeah, I've just been exploring my spirituality through mm -hmm. um, the evolution of my garden and how things grow throughout the seasons. Oh, nice. Um, and then as far as sculpture goes, I'm primarily a ceramicist. Oh, okay. Uh, work a lot in hand building, uh, figurative sculpture, uh, a lot of animals, uh, birds. Um, little Venus figures, things like that. Really whimsical stuff. Oh, fun, fun. Well, I saw yeah. the work that you and your husband had done um, on Facebook. I think you guys were posting some stuff about your studio space. It looks fantastic. Yeah. Dude, look at my jewelry. These windows. Oh. So the, the nice. side lights, the yeah. side lights are screened in, they open. Oh, wow. So That's I can awesome. get the cross flow and you can see my loom behind me and my sewing oh, machine. I've that got, is amazing. My, I like puppets. That's so cool. I've been working on that puppet for a while there. Oh, um, awesome. I've got all my paints and little bits and my husband does um, Warhammer. He's uh -huh. a gamer. Yeah. So those are his sculptures. Cool. Above me and you can see some of my pen and inks, but it, it was a single Ooh. car garage and uh it was the best thing we've ever done to close it in. Oh, awesome. I'm so happy. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm so jealous. I was like, oh, my gosh. I saw these pictures as it was progressing. I was like, oh, that is a nice space for, you know, yeah. just have that space. It's, you know, because art. Dream of dreams. Yeah. So that's that's <laughs> awesome. That's great. So that's really nice that you dabble in all these other disciplines because I think that makes it um easier to help especially when you um, go to secondary well even in elementary art you get a wide um, breadth of things but then in high school um, the students maybe specialize a little bit more on certain things so you can help them out in whatever direction and give them some guidance guidance in that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. gotcha so um, can you talk about a little bit uh, maybe some artists that have inspired your work Sure. Um, I am a huge fan of the pop surrealist. Oh. Um, I actually, in undergrad, um, my exit show was um, called Technicolor Nightmares. Oh. <laughs> and it, um, it took comic book imagery and oh. fables like um, cool. Little Red Riding Hood nice. and things like that. And um, the um, Hansel and Gretel. Oh, but really? I turned it so that the stove was eating the witch mm -hmm. instead of the cool. witch trying to eat the children. And oh, wow. um, I, I took the playfulness of pop mm -hmm. surrealism and the colors. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I really like the obscene colors. And it's mm -hmm. very um, fauvist almost. Oh, okay. So lots, of, lots of really purely saturated color, mm -hmm. um, contrasting color, really... Um, curvular shapes mm -hmm. like very abstracted yeah. I don't know it's really fun it's really cool. playful very cartoony 
I'm I'm a, I'm a living cartoon if you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and your students will like that cuz they they like, you know, even in high school they like to have somebody who's excited about, you know, yeah. what they're teaching. So that's awesome. I can totally tell that uh, about you. You know, there was a question before. I always do this. I don't know why I skipped this question, but I wanted to ask you, um, when did you feel like you knew you wanted to pursue art or that you were an artist? Always. Um, but yeah. the, the one, the one thing that always sticks out in my mind um, there was a book when mm. I was little called Panda Gets a Paint Set. Uh -huh. <laughs> and in the book, Panda is black and white and uh -huh. he gets a paint set and he paints a scarf oh, and his mittens and, cute. you know, he paints his whole world oh, and eventually he paints a rainbow and he lives happily ever uh -huh. after. Well, um, I have the painting that I did oh. of Panda and his paint set from when I, I was probably maybe four at most. Okay. And, um, oh. and that was the first time I remember somebody going, you're good at this. You should be an artist. But it, the desire to paint and create has mm -hmm. always been the biggest facet of my personality. Like I've always been really driven to, to make stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. That's awesome. So like, when did you realize you wanted to become a teacher? I know that's a little extra question there, but, um, I like it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so creating and teaching have always been kind of wrapped Yay. in together. Mm -hmm. um, I found in high school mm -hmm. when I really started honing in on my own artistic style and really getting excited about art, I wanted to share it with everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, my first student, I mm -hmm. guess you could say, uh, I was babysitting and I was <laughs> like, you know, I'm really stoked about this. I'm going to teach you how to do it. And they really liked it. Mm. And so I started teaching more how to do it. And then, okay. and then uh, by the time I got to college, um, that, uh, that excitement was recognized by one of my professors. And mm. she hooked me up with some people to do private art lessons. Nice. And it, it really spiraled out of control from there. Yeah. <laughs> because um, by 2006, yeah. I was operating four or five summer camps a year. Nice. And, uh, <laughs> you go, girl. Seriously, that's awesome yeah. art entrepreneur. Like, like I, that's what I, you'll love about high school because your your students are always like, how can, I, the ones that are really into it, they'll be like, how can I make this mm -hmm. into a living? Like, I'm truly passionate yeah. about this. So that's awesome. That, that will really um, help because I think sometimes um, with, Older students are like, well, their parents, especially, not to say anything, but but they they worry that they're and I would do the same as a oh, parent. You're gonna you make know, a how this. you are you gonna live under a bridge? <laughs> are you gonna live underneath a you know? Are you gonna live on a street bench? <laughs> you know, so so being able to say the business side of it is so important because I feel like oh, yeah. it's not discussed enough in high school. We we try really hard to do all the materials, the techniques, and maybe a little bit about career counseling. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's awesome that you were running all those by yourself. Can I say, yeah. were you really? Well, so it started out with the private lessons yeah. and then, um, Georgia Southern had a program called summer studios. Okay. And, um, one of the teachers was sick one day oh. and they threw me in as a sub. I was just in my studio painting and they're like, oh. Hey, can you come teach this class? And I was like, Sure. Wow. And um, then I loved it so much that wow. they they hired me for the next session, and then I was like, yeah. I could do this by myself. Yeah. And so I worked with Summer Studios for three years, yeah. but then I started hosting my own camps at the Avert Center. Nice. And then eventually I hooked up with um, uh, Annette Lang, and she did these imaginative journeys camps. We oh. traveled all over the state at different like libraries and. Awesome. Um, uh, children's places and she did so immersive cool. history so we would like show up in world war ii <laughs> here like, i would do an art lesson about you know nose art on airplanes and cool. you know like that is it was super awesome cool. that is so, so cool yeah it's been a really uh -huh. bizarre track to teaching so um i didn't uh -huh. i started that in like 2005 2006 and i didn't get my teaching credentials and or even start them uh -huh. until 2011 Wow, 
that yeah. is cool. But it really informs your journey. That is awesome. Yeah, I know why they hired you. <laughs> they picked you. Because it's really, I mean, that is really cool. Like, I, I honestly didn't know about your, I know you do summer camps because you also, mm -hmm. another art teacher we know that we're friends with, um, you do those summer camps. And so I, and I knew that you did stuff with the Avert Center. I had no idea you had all of that stuff that you had done. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was with Imaginative Journeys for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, I was the resident artist at the Averett Center. Uh -huh. I was their first resident artist, uh -huh. actually. So I had a studio up there uh -huh. and did weekly classes. Um, nice. I've probably hosted, I'm going to say over 15 camps at the Averett Center. Uh -huh. um, I've worked with the City of Savannah Cultural Arts Center for mm -hmm. several years. Nice. Um, I've been all, I've really been You're all over everything. the place. I've been as far as, um, what, was it LaGrange? No, Noonan, Noonan. Wow. We did some work in Noonan. So I'd really hoped to travel uh -huh. with, um, I, I really enjoyed traveling, uh -huh. but, um, you know, as you get older, you really want some, uh, stability. <laughs> and that's one of the things that brought me back to getting my teaching credential is because, oh. um, I wanted to see my students more than just one week at a year. Yeah. You know, I wanted to watch them grow awesome. and uh, have that stability of having my own classroom and not working out of a storage unit. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I literally had a storage unit and I would like, just go pick up my supplies and I'd go teach and then I'd bring them back. That's you know, awesome, so, man. Yeah. You're like grassroots. That is so cool. And see, that is awesome. That's amazing. No, I really, because it's, it's something that a lot of people don't realize, like, I love that about teaching. This is the part that kind of hooked me in with teaching was, well, I mean, it's great, the light bulb and all that stuff, but it's also because you're, you will find the ones that truly love art, like in any classroom, like in elementary, they all love art, but there were those ones that I was just like, Ooh, you love art. Like <laughs> you yeah. really love it. And so you watch them grow and you, and as they get older, someone when I taught elementary they would come back and they'd come see me they would show me their work I would give them some advice about well if you're looking at digital art I would try xyz or you're you're thinking about this as a career like I love that aspect of it and uh so it's really nice to have that camaraderie with mm -hmm. your students so that's awesome that's great yeah. so like what are you um what are you working on currently? Um, is there any personal project because of the, you know, of the, uh, the virus? What have you been working on at your house? Oh man, all the things. So, <laughs> um, the past couple years have been yeah. kind of a whirlwind for us. Uh -huh. Um, I, after having Thomas, he was uh -huh. in the NICU and I was oh. on bed rest and then I okay. went right back to work after he came out of the NICU and then wow. John deployed and da 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 da. And, um, so I haven't really had a lot of time for personal work. So mm -hmm. when quarantine hit, yeah. I made a list, we started attacking it. Yeah. We organized the studio. We put in some new garden oh. beds. I started painting. We're doing drawings. Oh. I'm finishing some prints. Um, I've been embroidering. Wow. I brought my sewing machine out. Like, nice. It's been really cool. Nice. Um, I hate to say that it takes a global pandemic. But uh, yeah. as a creative, I needed this time, yeah. you know, and um, yeah, I I have a lot of unfinished projects just from quarantine, mm -hmm. but um, it's been it's been really refreshing, awesome. you know. I even painted the kitchen. Oh wow! Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm not that motivated <laughs> to tackle that. I just like close my studio door because my husband and son it's like I just throw food at them just like here you go and then I go run in my oh, studio gosh. and go work because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm at that time frame where yeah. it's like I have nap time and after bedtime oh, you know what I yeah. mean and I can get a lot done in that I even did some macrame the other day I made really? like a little mini bracelet oh that's so <laughs> like, cool what? Well, you gotta, I haven't seen your embroidery, or maybe I missed it, because sometimes I hate now how Instagram, like, people who I actually legitimately follow, I don't see their work anymore. I'm getting some weird stuff, and, um, so I, I haven't... I posted the embroidery. Oh, you haven't? Cause okay, because I would like to see that. I, I really, because one of the patterns that I worked on, it was informed... Like, oh, that is, is beautiful! Holy but it, it was a kit that I altered. Uh -huh. So it's like, I can't, I didn't post it because I can't take credit for it, you oh. know what I mean? That like, is cool. 
it was a little kid, but I'm, I'm getting back into it. And, yeah. um, oh, so uh, textileartists.org, I think it's what the name of it is. Yeah. Um, if you're interested oh, yeah. in slow stitch at all, uh -huh. they've been having a weekly challenge since quarantine. Yeah. And holy cow, the work coming out of that is amazing, Nancy. Really? Like, I'm going to send you a link to it right oh, now. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Wow. It, it's been so inspiring that... Uh -huh. um, I plan on sharing some of the challenges yeah. with my students this fall. That's awesome. Cool. Like, it's been brilliant. And the way that they've got it structured is uh -huh. each week is a different featured artist with a different technique with an article that supports it in a video. Cool. Like it's really well curated. Wow. And is it, it's all hand stitched up? It's all slow stitch. Really? Yeah. It's, all, yeah. it's amazing. That's neat. Um, I my hope I yeah. is that now that John has left yeah. that, um, I'm going to start the challenges up. I haven't started That's them awesome. yet. That is so cool. Yeah, I love the look of embroidery. I personally, I don't know if I have the patience, but I love no. the look of it. And then, so I've been experimenting with, like, some of the line work that I see embroidery. Like, I like that and putting it in surface design um, yeah. and mimicking some of that. So I love, um, yeah, it's just, it's it's so beautiful and I go like oh but I don't have the patience I just don't have the patience to do it so I do it digitally but it's it's uh, amazing that to see the work quality yes that, that um that embroidery has uh, yes. I'm actually going to be teaching fibers in the fall oh cool nice. yeah and I at first I was really overwhelmed by that because oh. um oh. they have a, a large fashion component and I'm not a fashion designer Oh, it's um, okay. But I am an upcycler. Yeah. So I'm I'm stoked about upcycling, but um, I really want to explore fibers as a process for mark making. Ooh. And that's yeah. that surface texture and building uh -huh. up the texture by embroidery and by um by even by felting oh, and cool. the, you know by assemblage and yeah. you know slashing the the fabric and yeah. you know cutting back into it and sewing back into it. Like I'm really. I'm awesome. really excited about that. I don't know if that's uh -huh. what they expected me to teach, yeah. but that is what I am excited to teach. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. dyeing. Yeah. I want to dye fabric so bad. It's going to be amazing. And like shibori. And oh, like, cool. Uh, you know, eco yeah. dyes. And wow. I'm getting, I'm getting really excited. Yeah, you'll be, be you'll do great at that. I mean, I, I did, Um, I was, you know, I did the whole fibers dyeing in art ed. I wasn't a big fan. Of it. It's so messy, yeah. and I would do it in my kitchen. It's so and messy. It's, yeah, it's so messy, and it's like the chemicals and stuff. My son was really young too at that time, and so I'd get yeah. a little paranoid. Um, he'd end up eating something because it looks like candy. But um, so I really liked basket weaving. I know it's kind of weird, but I'd get into the Zen thing. You would, I just, and I watched the forms that come out of basket weaving that I was like. This stuff is really cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I did uh, that. You'll have so much fun because there's so many different possibilities with that. I think that's awesome. That's yes. great. And I'm in the, yeah. um, my classroom's the old home ec room. Oh. So, um, at the high school, okay. there's, uh, they have the sewing tables that go, like, they hide away. <gasps> and then they have, oh. um, there's several stoves in there. So, like, I can do, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I can do the the oh, dyeing on the stove and stuff. And that's I'll, awesome. Like, some of the stoves aren't operational, so I'm okay. asking them to take them out. But um, yeah. <laughs> it's so awesome. weird. I'm in the home ec room, Nancy. That's awesome. I but it's a huge it's, room. Yeah. It's an uh -huh. it's an amazing space. Awesome. It's a really cool space. Well, I think this is so, gonna be really up your alley. I mean, just talking to you and about the ideas you have for this, I think it's it's a good fit. I think it's a very good fit. So I am yeah. always gung ho. Uh -huh. Like if I'm gonna do something, I'm just gonna do it. Yeah. And when I interviewed for the job, yeah. I already had my scope and sequence written. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, fantastic. They were like, so how would you start off the first semester? And I was like, perfect. And here it is. That's an awesome tip. I mean, seriously, if you, anybody who's listening and you're um, gonna be, you're trying to get into being an art teacher because um, I went ahead and started when it was the 2008 recession. There was like mm -hmm. one art teaching position in like five or six counties. I was applying, like we're here in Georgia and I was applying in South Carolina. I yeah. mean, it was so bad. 
And um, things like you're saying, it shows that you're prepared, that you know. And I think especially in secondary, that's really, oh, really yeah. helpful. Because they don't want to know that you're <laughs> you're going to spend, because your, your class sessions may be longer. You might be on a block schedule. And how are you going to fill that for 90 yeah. minutes or two and a half hours? I think we're on 50s. Really? 50 we're, minute? Yeah, we're gotcha. on a seven period. Okay. So yeah. they, they the want to. block, yeah. oh my gosh, the prep involved with that? Uh-huh. It wouldn't be that bad. 90 minutes would be great. I think 90 minutes would be the sweet spot for high school because then yeah. you can, like, if you're um, doing projects like you're doing, because I always feel like at, um, at 40 minutes, you're just kind of warming up. You've had to d explain mm -hmm. stuff. You've had to demonstrate. Then you're really only going to be, if you're lucky and you talk really fast, <laughs> and then you got to incorporate cleanup, you got 25 minutes of actual working yeah. time. And so um, 90 minutes, I always feel like that would probably be for secondary kind of, uh, especially high school, the sweet spot. Because if yeah. they're working on a longer project, something bigger, then they can really, you can really see the progress of that. But um, yeah, when, when I do private yeah. lessons, it's, it's usually about 90 minutes. Oh, really? So okay. That it, gotcha. Yeah, that would be. And even like uh -huh. when I do uh, workshops, yeah. I did a printmaking workshop oh, last nice. summer and it was 90 minutes. Oh, it was cool. Perfect. That was oh. really nice. Wow. You are so. one busy lady. That is... I don't get to do any workshops this summer because of coronation. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, cool. Carl and I are going to... We're moving ours oh. to the end of July in hopes that we'll be able to teach by then. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, That's I love working with Carla. And our, yes. our teaching styles yeah. are so ultimately different uh -huh. that we really complement each other. It's so That's great. That's awesome. That's great. Well, and I love... Like, He's very calm and precise. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And like, y'all, we're going to do it this way. Uh -huh. And I am like over the top excited uh -huh. and really messy. But mm -hmm. I clean up. Yes. So like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I love working with her. She has she's great. such amazing ideas. She's, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I love her. Yeah, she's wonderful. Oh. And she's, uh, yeah. I mean, I went to art education, um, my certification at Armstrong. And that's where I met Carla. She was mm -hmm. there with, you know, and she just was really great to talk to, really, really kind and sharing with all her knowledge. And so yeah. just, yeah, just really sweet. Just really nice person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um, oh, next question is how, so how do you stay motivated to keep working? Like you said, you have a lot going on, the teaching, you have a family, um, you, you know, you're also giving private lessons and camp. So how do you stay motivated to work on your own personal work? It's compulsory. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, like I said before, it's, uh, it really is, uh, an intrinsic part of my personality. Mm. I, um, I'm always making something. Okay. Even if it is as simple as, um, oh, I'm also a, uh, a garden and I can. <laughs> So, um, I'm always, I'm always making something. I also yeah. bake bread. Oh, nice. Um, so if I'm not creating uh, traditional art, painting or sculpture or printmaking, I'm in the kitchen and I'm baking or I'm canning or I'm gardening or, um, I, I have to have an outlet for mm -hmm. all of the creative energy that I have. So, um, if I stop doing yeah. any of that, it's, um, something seriously wrong like I'm sick <laughs> oh yeah yeah because it's I get yeah. cranky if I haven't done any artwork oh, yeah. in a while people are just like what is wrong with her she's usually a nice person it's like I haven't had time to make anything I'm just like Ur. so yeah I find it's very relaxing and everybody's personalities or even if you're a really outgoing person you're an artist it's that kind of that need to find time to just make something and so yeah make anything yes yeah totally agree oh with that oh my gosh when we yeah. were on bed rest um oh, yeah. I was on bed rest with Thomas for six weeks Ooh. and um I had a girlfriend of mine go into my classroom and get my felt stash <sighs> and it was uh it was at Christmas like I, I think it was December oh. either December 10th or 12th that I went on bed rest yeah. so I was there through Christmas and New Year's and I <sighs> covered that room in felt ornaments it was Ooh. like I had a six foot tall felt Christmas tree wow. and I made ornaments for all the nursing staff Aww. and like ornaments for all my friends and Aww. you know it was I 
I didn't stop even on bed rest. Wow. That's <laughs> I had, fantastic. I had like a card table in the corner yeah. of the room, like a folding yeah. card table with all my crafts on. Awesome. That's amazing. Um, it was actually really fun. Oh, cool. Do you have pictures of that? Did you take pictures? Yeah, You absolutely. should post those. Oh, my gosh. Are they on your so Instagram? Can... Say again? Are they on your Instagram? Have you posted them? No. Oh. So I didn't get Instagram until uh, Carla and I did a clay workshop. Uh -huh. Was it last summer? I think it was either last summer uh -huh. or the summer before last. We did an Amico workshop. Okay. And um, some of the girls at the workshop were like, what's your Instagram? And I was like, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> and they're like, no, we're setting you up an Instagram right nice. now. And I'm very thankful for that because, yeah. I mean, you can just scroll and geek out on yes. art all day long with Instagram. Yes. But um, I did not know because, I, I mean, yeah. I'm not very... I'm not very uh, media savvy. Uh, like, I don't know. That's all I need right. To get better no. at that if I'm working with high schoolers, so. Oh, it's all right. No, I think that's awesome that you're on there because I do for those same reason. And I didn't start Instagram. I don't remember why, but people kept telling me like, "Are you on Instagram? Are you doing Instagram?" And it's kind of that same thing. It's like, should I be doing Instagram? I don't know. So I guess I started and, and I was just like, um, I will talk to people more on Instagram just because the demographic is, they're more artists or visual artists usually. Yeah. And so it's easy to DM people and talk to them. That's personally why. And then also keeping up with friends who are into the arts. So they're usually posting. So, but no worries. Yeah. I, um, I was a late joiner to Instagram. I'm going to try to find a picture of that Christmas tree to send you, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely send that to me. So, my next question um, is, where where has it been your favorite place to um, work on your art? Ooh. That's really hard, because um, mm -hmm. I do so many different types yeah. of art, mm -hmm. and... Um, I have made art in so many different yeah. types of places that I'm pretty, yeah. I don't know. That's really hard. Because yeah. I will have to say my, my studio at Georgia Southern was probably oh, my favorite. Oh, really? Why is that? I get all nostalgic now. <laughs> so um, the studios at Georgia Southern, yeah. uh, have you ever been in their, I don't even know if they're still the painting building, but um, yeah. they were these great open uh classrooms mm -hmm. since i was a painting major i um oh. i was in the same studio space from painting yeah. two although i think i went up to painting six. Oh wow um so i mean several years in the yeah. same space wow it had this great big wall of window mm -hmm. and there was a nice ledge in the window and i had wow. my little chotskis and my plants and i had this Ooh. wonderful tabaret that was probably it was probably five foot long Whoa. with a glass top that I could mix my paint on. Wow. had these great deep drawers that I could put all my things in. Wow. I had three easels. <gasps> so wow. I, had, I had multiple paintings going at the same time. Awesome. And then there was a cork board behind my easels. Yeah. So I had all my reference pictures and all my mantras, you know, up on the cork board. Yeah. And uh, it was just a really groovy space. And I shared it with... Um, Let's see, there was four of us in the studio. Oh. So um, it was, I, I really, I really, oh, oh man, it was wonderful. Wow. I love that because we could, we could feed off of each other's uh -huh. work. And, you know, depending on what semester it was, people switched out. But I was in the same spot for wow. most of the program. Wow. So, Amazing. yeah. I think I was only in one other studio other than that. Oh, awesome. So, um, yeah, I was really lucky in that. That's great. But, uh, yeah, Georgia Southern had an amazing... Yeah. Um, the painting studio and it, the sculpture yeah. studio there was phenomenal too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I really enjoyed my time at Southern. Oh, um, oh, yeah. I don't know. It's fond yeah. memories. Yeah. That's awesome. So if there, uh, Oh, what's the most indispensable item in your studio? Something you just can't live without. Sharpie. <laughs> <laughs> the simple Sharpie. So why the Sharpie? I'm curious. Why the Sharpie marker? So, um, I use Sharpies for my pen and ink. I use Sharpies to draw on random things. I use Sharpies to take my notes. I use Sharpies because they're Sharpies. If I only had one art supply to use for teaching, it would be a pencil and a Sharpie. Like I could do all the things in Sharpie. 
So, um, but I mean, my paint's important. Mm -hmm. That's important. But if it had to be one thing, yeah. like if I only could carry one thing with me art related, it would probably be a Sharpie. Nice. Yeah. And, yeah. That's, and it's small and practical. <laughs> hey, that works. So if you could go into a time machine and go back to your younger self and tell yourself um, some advice about being an art teacher or having your own art business, what would that be? Or it could be both in your case. So I was pretty driven uh -huh. from a very young age of wanting to be an artist. Yes. And when I decided to yeah. have my own art business, nothing stopped me. Awesome. Um, so, but I will say that mm -hmm. um, there is a book called The Four Agreements. Oh, let me write that down. Yes, okay. and um, somebody loaned it to me after um, my first son was born. Okay. And um, I really wish I had read that earlier in life because mm -hmm. it was so simple and uh -huh. so life-changing because um, I've always been... I've always been an artist. I've always mm. wanted to be an artist and I'm and nothing was going to stop me from doing that. However, the interpersonal things that revolved around my drive to be an artist, um, were not always easy. Mm. So, um, the four agreements really helped with that. And they are, uh, to be impeccable with your word, mm. which I've yeah. always been really yeah. good at that, except yeah. for you know, sometimes people think I'm a little bossy, but, <laughs> um, uh, don't take anything personally. And I think that's really important as that's, an artist. Yes. So, and a, as a human being, yeah. because we all get upset so easily when some people, you know, don't have any intent behind it. So don't mm -hmm. take anything personally. Um, but the, the, the big one, the, mm -hmm. the really big one is don't make assumptions. Oh. So, which can go back to don't take things personally, but okay. don't make assumptions. You have to, you have to dig and you have to find out, you know, the intent yes. behind different things and okay. you have to um, make sure you have clarity. Okay. And then um, the last one is always try your best, always yeah. do your best. And that looks different on different days, okay. which is really important yeah. because, you know, being so driven, yeah. I want to do it all, all yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. And it's not realistic. Yeah. You know, oh, it's yeah. not, but mm -hmm. it, as long as I'm doing what I can, yes. you yeah. know, and, um, yeah. So in fact, yeah. you know, you said you were going to ask me that question and that was the first thing that popped into my mind was the four agreements. And mm -hmm. I, I really think that, um, I'm going to post them in my classroom yeah. at the high school because yeah. they were so life changing for me. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Cause, um, I, I think it's, um, you know, like some of the things that you're saying is an artist. I think there is that because it is so personal to you, it is your work and you're putting it out there and it's a little bit like, uh, uh, what are people yeah. going to think? And I finally realized I am not competing with anybody. And I have to remind myself, you are never competing. I am competing with myself and am yeah. I a better artist than I was six months ago? So I, I feel like you know, am I getting better? And then getting compliments from friends and family saying, you know, your work has gotten so much better. And that's great because I'm paying a lot for graduate school. So yes. I'm glad it's working out. <laughs> but it's, yeah, I think um, once, because I felt like in my undergrad, there was this pressure like, oh, I'm competing with all of these people. Sure. And I think it's that switch flipping that and understanding that I'm learning from other people. And I, I really feel like I needed that journey to be an art teacher. I had to spend 11 years as an art teacher and and also learning from my current students. They are so business minded. I have some that are mm -hmm. already and they're so young and they've started their own businesses and I'm so proud of them that they wow. did this. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, they're they're in high school and they're doing this. Why am I not? <laughs> and then I realized like, <laughs> if they can do it, I can do it. And so I feel like I had to have that 11 years. I think everything comes at a time and a place and you do what you can. Like when I first had my son, I was lucky to find any time to work on anything and you feel a lot of guilt, but you know, you realize yeah. that it's, that somebody said it to me. It's, um, and it was one of the people maybe, um, that I interviewed and I can't remember who I was just talking to him, but it was like, the season that you are in of your life, 
those seasons ebb and change and that is a natural flow to life you are not yes. always just static on a you know your road goes up and down and so your life should mm-hmm. reflect that so yeah that's really awesome that um oh, hearing that Talking from somebody about else that, that ebb and flow exactly. i had somebody uh come yeah. to my classroom yesterday i'm packing it up and, and she's like why are you going to leave us you're so good with the littles why would you ever want to do high school <laughs> like i'm ready you know like i've i've wanted this change for a very yeah. long time and i never I thought I was going to be a professor of art. Mm-hmm. I never thought I was going to teach elementary school. Mm-hmm. You know, it's time. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so ready. Yeah. And so I, ready. I think, you know, you know what you want, like, you know, I mean, for everybody it's different and those things can change and evolve. That's what I've found. And so just my first goal was I wanted to keep it kind of as when I was an art ed major I was like keep it simple I just want to make it to an art teacher (laughs) next go to the next and then figure out what that is for everybody and it's different but I think you're going to really enjoy it I think your students are also going to enjoy you and your personality because I know I would be excited to go to class especially when you're going to a you know 8 a.m class and so (laughs) everybody's tired and so yeah your personality I think that'll be a, a really welcome in the high school and you know what you will probably have the opportunity will your students maybe feed into that high school is there an opportunity that you might have some, some of them some oh yeah. that's awesome some of them are, yeah so yeah. i will i will see some of them in fact um <sighs> my cool. rising sixth graders um oh so one of the things that yeah. really sucks about all this is yeah. that i got the job after we went on quarantine so oh. i haven't gotten to say goodbye and, you know, being at that school for seven years, I've watched those babies grow up from pre-K. Yeah. So, but um, the, the few kids that I've had in my Google Classroom yeah. or the kids that I've run into public, I've been telling them personally, hey, I'm leaving. I'm going to the high school. Mm-hmm. Come see me. Yes. And uh, some of them have been really excited and right. then some of them are mad. But <laughs> I'm, I am very, I'm very hopeful that some of them will feed into me. Oh, and I'll be teaching a random seventh grade class. Oh. So um, I'll be able to, it's uh, intro to art, okay. and I'll, they'll feed into the high school. So nice. I'll, I'll kind of put the feelers out, yeah. and then and then uh, the middle school is on um, semester. So I'll have, uh-huh. you know, two separate classes okay. of seventh grade to feed into me awesome. when they finally get to the high school. So that'll be pretty cool. That is cool, because yeah. it is, to me, one of the big parts, and I I don't know that they always emphasize uh, emphasize this in my art education experience. It's those relationships. Man, that is like gold. Like after you've been anywhere, because I was at my elementary school for eight years, those Mm -hmm. students, like I didn't even have to, they were were amazing because they knew exactly this is where she wants the paints. This is how she wants things cleaned up. They had it down to a science. So if I only had, because maybe a group of students maybe needed a little bit more time, I could get them to clean up in like two minutes. And we could do oh, yeah. doing a clay project. I'd be like, guys, we got to clean up now. I gave you like, you know, five extra minutes to work. So you know what to do. And like, boof, it's like done. And um, yeah. that's stuff like that. And being able to trust your students. Oh, I need you to run this or I need you to do this. Or can you go? Yeah. They they knew. They knew exactly how I wanted it done and what my expectations were. So, um, yeah. And you're going to love it in high school because they're bigger. And then you can yeah. let them really, you know, have some freedom. So, yeah. I so One of the saddest things yeah. about being a specials teacher at the elementary school oh, is yeah. that nobody realizes that you have that six-year connection with exactly. your fifth graders. Exactly. That you've literally watched them grow for, yes. for years and they assume that your experience is like theirs. You get them for one year at a time yeah. and that's like, we really get to know those kids. Mm-hmm. Like I, I was in, I went to the uh, gas station yesterday oh. and I recognized one of my babies from the back of the head oh. and she's, she's 16 now. Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she, she, I haven't had her in years, and I re- and she's yeah. got purple hair now too. And wow. I recognized her from the back of the head. Wow! Like Amazing. we really get to know those babies. <laughs> yes, and I think that's what's special about elementary art because it's like I realized I was like I've had some of these kids for seven years since pre K. Yeah. 
and they they just yeah and it's fantastic most of mine i hate to say it, they change so much between middle and high school i'm like i don't recognize especially the boys i'm like are you the, the same? boys yeah i have okay. a better time recognizing the girls but the boys i'm like they've shot up like five feet and they've like, like yeah. and you're like is that the same student that little baby in elementary school so yeah i i definitely feel like uh yeah there's great perks about um about elementary and there's great things about high school and i'll have to have you back on the podcast so maybe we can talk a little bit more about that um just the different things that you get out of teaching those different areas so um oh and so do you want me to ask you that last question because i feel like you kind of touched about it when you talked about the four agreements it's the one Mm -hmm. that deep question at the end of your life you've made all the art that you've wanted and you've lived a full life if there could be nothing left behind of your existence but a note you've written with three final truths, what would those truths be? Ooh. You know, <laughs> I read this question when you when you sent them to me, and I don't think I I fully grasp how deep it was. <laughs> because now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, wow. Um, so it's the only thing left when I'm gone. Yes. Three truths. No artwork, um, just a note. Man. I don't know if I can answer that. <laughs> That's okay. That's, <laughs> That's all right. Much. That's, That's too much. Right. Um because like I had all these yeah. flooding ideas about, yeah. you know, beauty and love mm-hmm. and truth and as I mean, it all seems so cliche, but that's really mm-hmm. That's it, you know, like playfulness. Mm-hmm. That's important. Mm-hmm. There it is. You got to have fun. Mm-hmm. That's great. Well, Lindsay, thank you so much for being on my podcast. And everybody, that was um, my creative life. Thanks for listening. <laughs>